Well, folks, it would appear that Disney has been caught with its pants down once more, this time when it comes to the ratings for Ahsoka. The company came out and crowed that Ahsoka was very, very popular. 14 million households tuning in. One of the biggest premieres of all time. Samba TV disagreed, and Disney clapped back. Now we're finding out there was nothing to that clap, because Nielsen is confirming now that indeed Ahsoka was down with Andor in terms of viewership. But it does indeed get much, much worse. Because there's something to the timeline, and we're going to bring that to you folks and reveal just what Disney knew, when they knew it, and how bad this harms Disney's credibility. Hello folks and welcome back to the WDW Pro channel. If it's your first time here, we are here to explain entertainment, keep you ahead of the culture curve, and we love doing it. We hope you love it as well. Today we're diving into the latest information out about the Ahsoka show. We're doing so with objective facts because we believe in the truth here on the channel. If you like content like that, consider clicking that like button. The latest stats out of Nielsen are out. We covered it on the Pro Show yesterday, Thursday, uh, September 28th. And now we are diving into the damage this has done to Disney's overall credibility. But just for a quick run through, for those of you who are hearing this for the very first time, Nielsen is out with their August 28th through September 3rd data. And we're going to show how the timeline plays out here. It turns out that as Disney was releasing statements, they knew that the floor had fallen out from under this show already. Didn't matter, though. They still said what they said. All right, so on the top 10, here's the big news, folks. Ahsoka, the Star Wars flagship live-action series that Dave Filoni is using to launch the Thrawn saga and lead up to a Mandoverse movie, by its second week, it has fallen completely out of the top 10 for streaming, period. Take a look at this. Netflix with the top three. Suits, One Piece. Who is Aaron Carter? Disney Plus's only top 10 appearance comes from a show that they do not produce You've heard it here many times, folks. Bluey, the preschool cartoon dog, is Disney's biggest and best and, well, only top 10. Grey's Anatomy, NCIS, you are so not invited to my bat mitzvah. Coco Melon Swat and repeats of the Big Bang Theory, which has not been big banging in many years. Those are your top 10. If you want to find Ahsoka, you'll have to click on Original, the subcategory. And within that subcategory, Ahsoka is number five, the fifth most popular original piece of work being done on the streaming services. Under, though, half a billion minutes watched. Not good, not good. And that indicates that it is nowhere close to being a cultural driver. And that indicates that Star Wars itself is not a cultural driver. Now, all of this we revealed yesterday. However, here's the news. This out of cosmic book news, we're going to walk through the timeline here. And we're going to show you that Disney knew, almost certainly, it's hard to imagine they didn't, Disney knew when they were doing this what was happening behind the scenes with Ahsoka, and they went ahead and released their statements anyway. We're going to show that to you. Here we go. This is out of Tuesday, August 29th. Now, remember, when we brought up the Nielsen charts, that was for August 28th through September 3rd. August 28th through September 3rd. So that means Disney, on the 29th, had 24 hours, 24 hours to know that those first 24 hours for Ahsoka Episode 3, which was its second week, because they released the first two episodes in the first week, they had 24 hours to know things were not all right. Disney, however, fired back against Ahsoka bombing on Disney+. Plus. This by Matt McGloin. Now, see what they're doing here. In the first week, we had this information straight out of the gate. Samba TV coming out there and saying that Ahsoka was performing around the levels of Andor. Okay? Hang with me now. Andor, not a popular show on Disney+, Plus, did not fare well. In fact, it did so poorly that not even Disney could hide the fact that it was doing poorly. And so when Samba TV came out and said that Ahsoka was doing at that level of Andor, all the alarm bells went off inside the House of Mouse, inside the halls of Burbank, and the big cheese himself, Bob Iger, maybe, told him to get out there and make some statements, and so they did. They clapped back. The only problem is there was nothing to be clapped about. Kathleen Kennedy even responded and released an official statement, and that's pretty rare because other than that, she has not spoken to a single reporter since the flop-tacular that is Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. So here's what happened. 
The spin in it, the spin is in as Disney Lucasfilm and Kathleen Kennedy fire back against uh, against it as they learned that Ahsoka had bombed on Disney Plus. All right. Following Samba TV revealing Ahsoka was watched by as many households in the U.S. as Andor, which means both shows are the least watched Star Wars series on Disney Plus streaming service. Get this. Disney actually revealed streaming numbers for Ahsoka. Oh, oh, sure they did. Sure they did. Disney announced Ahsoka clocked in 14 million views, making the series number one worldwide on the streaming platform. But the kicker? It's the most watched title on Disney Plus this past week. Again, that also was untrue. Remember, folks? Bluey beat Ahsoka in its debut. Ahsoka came out with 100 minutes. That's a theatrical release amount of runtime and was defeated by Blue in its first week. So that, that was false. We've already covered that. Lucasfilm President Kathleen Kennedy released the following statement. Ahsoka has become a fan favorite with people of all ages, and it's wonderful to see her continue to resonate with viewers in her own headlining series. I want to recognize... Da -da 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 all right. Regarding Samba TV, Samba TV reported that viewership for the first episode of Ahsoka drew 1.2 million households, but that the second episode lost nearly 300,000 viewers, with less than a million U.S. households tuning in for the second episode. So they had it pegged down there at Andor levels. Disney came out and said, no, 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 it is the most popular show. That was false. It's getting huge viewership. What was the number they said? Look at this. Disney announced Ahsoka clocked in 14 million views. 14 million. Now, folks out there, I want you to multiply 14 times 100. That's the, that's the run time. 14 times 100, and you see what those uh, minutes would turn out to be on Nielsen and see if they're anywhere in the realm of reality. But here's the cool thing. Here's what we're going to show you. This is amazing. Take a look at this. This out of Jedi Temple Archives. This from December 16th, 2022. The Nielsen streaming charts for Andor Episode 11. Oh, that's right. We have the numbers for Andor, and now we're going to find out who was telling the truth and when they knew it. It's yet another Friday, and that means Nielsen have updated their weekly streaming charts. This week, Andor episode 11 was included, the penultimate episode, not the finale. We're not using the finale, folks. We're not using one that would be unfair to compare. And Andor viewership sees a slight increase compared to previous episodes. Nielsen have added the penultimate Andor episode. As usual, we have a four-week delay, so we only get the numbers now. Yada, yada, yada. Here's what we have. Viewership for Andor saw a slight increase. Andor accumulated 455 million viewing minutes, an increase of 35 minutes from episode 10. Remember, though, of course, Andor launched with uh, better numbers. It waned as time went on, and it lifted up towards the end, just like, just like normal, but... For its penultimate episode, second to last episode, 455 million minutes watched. Let's go back to uh, let's go back to Nielsen. Ahsoka, 487 million minutes watched in the third episode. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're telling me that Ahsoka had 487 and Andor had 455, and it stayed in that sort of range, right in the 400s. And Ahsoka is now in the 400s. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's go back to, hold on. Here's Cosmic Book News. I'm, I'm so confused at the moment. I'm not really. Disney fires back against Ahsoka bombing on Disney+. Plus. The spin is in, yada, yada, following Samba TV, revealing Ahsoka was watched by as many households in the U.S. as Andor. Oh. Oh. That's because Samba TV was right. And Disney knew that. Oh. I see. And wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's go back again, folks. August 29th. That's 24 hours into the third episode. Disney, here's the kicker. Disney was clapping back about the first two episodes and, and yelling at everyone. No, it was watched by so many. It was watched by 14 million. But wait a minute. Disney, when they responded, had 24 hours, it seems, of the third episode. And they already knew that it was indeed down at Andor levels. It wasn't just that Disney clapped back about the first two episodes and was wrong, and they were. And we know that definitively now. It's that Disney also had data that we did not yet have about the third episode. And it was worse than the first two. So let that sink in, folks. Disney knew... You would have to assume. I mean, how in the world could they not? They have Disney Plus data. It comes to them. Disney had that data. Disney knew that Ahsoka was performing worse at the same time that they were proclaiming 
how popular it was. Now, why does this all matter? Take a look at this out of Variety. September 18th, Elemental draws 26.4 million views in first five days on Disney+. Plus. Oh, wow. Look at that. It's 12 million more than Ahsoka, supposedly. The Disney and Pixar film Elemental had a strong start on Disney+, Plus, with the film pulling in 26.4 million views in its first five days of streaming availability. This is proclaimed as news by Joe Otterson, who, you know, no, no uh, blame goes to Joe, just doing his job, but... You know, this is proclaimed as news. Then it gets promulgated all throughout the uh, the access and legacy media types. They report this as if it is objective fact. But take a look. Per Disney. There it is. Per Disney. What does that mean? Well, that means that Disney gave those numbers. That makes Elemental the most watched movie premiere of the year on the service and among the top 10 movie premieres they have ever had. For context, Disney defines a view and it goes into all the rigor and that we don't care about. Goes on to talk about how Turning Red was the one that that was uh, number one previously. Hmm. You know what, folks? Here's a little interesting tidbit for all of you out there. When we find out that Ahsoka is off, not by a little, but by a gargantuan number, and when we find out that Disney almost certainly, unless unless they are incompetent in the utmost ways when it comes to data collection, that Disney even knew that their ratings were diving on Ahsoka and they were they were still putting out those kinds of statements. Well, what that does is it makes us believe nothing, nothing, nothing that Disney says when it comes to ratings on Disney Plus. Nothing. So they can they can proclaim any number they want now on Elemental. They can proclaim any number they want for any of these shows. Why would you believe them? We know definitively now Samba TV was right. Andor and Ahsoka, by the third episode, were coming within 30 million minutes watched. And in the grand scheme of these kinds of numbers, that is essentially identical. Ahsoka has Andor numbers. And Disney put out statements that tried to mislead people, I believe. So why would you believe anything they say anymore? This is the bottom line. Disney has burned their credibility with Ahsoka. Now, I know that many of you out there enjoy this show. In fact, we've talked about this before, that it's a 50-50 split when it comes to Ahsoka. Seems like half the audience likes it, half the audience does not like it. It's a 50-50 split in that some of you out there really like Dave Filoni, and some of you think that Dave Filoni is baloney. And I appreciate that. I respect the split. We respect the opinions here. When it comes to math, math is math. And we don't play the game of subjectivity when it comes to numbers. When it comes to the fact that Ahsoka has Andor numbers, that is what it is. That's not to say that you can't enjoy Ahsoka if you do. That is to say that the viewers are few compared to what we once had. You say, well, what kind of numbers did we once have? Well, we had shows like... Uh, the Mandalorian. And The Mandalorian, with far less subscribers on Disney+, Plus, was pulling in over a billion minutes watched per episode. Ahsoka, down below half a billion minutes watched. And yes, that is Andor level. Is it Miss Marvel? No, it's not Miss Marvel yet. But the series could go there. Because outside of a couple of episodes, it doesn't seem like people really enjoyed this. Now, the, our good friends over at EBN really liked the latest episode. I didn't. Uh, Lauren Connor did not. But we're still really good friends. And you can be friends with people who have different opinions about Ahsoka. When it comes to the ratings, though, there's really no wiggle room here. And the bottom line is that Disney is a company that cannot be trusted because they have fabricated a narrative that simply isn't true. And I know why they did it. I know they had to quote unquote, get ahead of the narrative, right? They had to get out in front of those skis and make sure that everybody knew that Ahsoka was popular. Less people tune out just believing, oh, well, it's unpopular. It's another one of these. But it is another one of these. And whether it's good or not, there is a phenomenon occurring with Star Wars, which is that it is drastically less important. In the grand scheme of all entertainment spectrum, it is drastically less important than it was when Disney bought it. When Disney bought it, it was a dormant, largely franchise. 
but it was ready to explode the moment someone gave it the juice. Now, you can juice this thing all you want, but it is on an IV that will not ever deliver the drip that it needs to draw back audiences. And that is ultimately because the sequel trilogy delivered a fatal blow. You can keep it in this state that it's in, this vegetative force state, but this is nothing. And the, the reason that it's nothing is because of the kind of investment it takes to make Star Wars. You can't invest tiny amounts of money, unless you're George Lucas making A New Hope. You can't invest tiny amounts of money and make Star Wars. It's very difficult. It requires costumes and FX and spaceships and all the like. And that means you need viewers. And until Disney gets it in their head that they have done something that has damaged the ability to get viewers, and until they fix that, this thing's going nowhere. But, perhaps even more importantly now, and perhaps this will catch the, catch the uh, ire of investors now, Disney has done something more severe, and that is that at the same time that we've had all this arguing over ratings and how writers and actors are going to know the ratings for shows and be benefited based on that, and how advertisers are going to know what the ratings are for shows so that they can pay the, the right amounts and not be deceived and not, not be paying um, you know, incorrect values for shows that are popular or unpopular, etc. Disney is out there giving us information that does not line up with anything else we're hearing. Samba TV, I'll give you a gold star on this. You got it right. And unfortunately, Disney probably knew that as they were maligning what you had said. And that is a bad, bad mouse. But folks, we are not a bad, bad mouse. Drop a like down below if you like content like this. Consider clicking the like button, share, subscribe, and click it. Stick it to the algorithms. It is indeedly doodly the notification bell. And this monologue with all of you on this happy Friday has come to an end. But let's turn it into a conversation. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. We cover your comments. We care about what's on your mind. If you've not yet watched the pro show, it was live yesterday, Thursday, from 5 to 7 p.m., just like it is every Thursday. But that doesn't mean that you can't tune in now. Remember that the live show remains up all the way through the weekend before it goes into the archives where members get access to the show. So hop on in and check it out. We covered a vast array of excellent information and we think you will greatly enjoy. Well, folks, we hope you're going to enjoy a wonderful weekend and wherever you are and whatever you're doing, keep learning, keep growing, and as always, keep having fun. Oh. What are you doing? Well, you see, I wanted to get some inside scoops on Disney and their, uh, different corporations, if you know what I mean. So I figured, by looking to this fistbowl and sucking it randomly with my own energy that I pay for, uh, uh, you paid for, I could do the whole experience where you can be a master and spy on your target. You're an idiot. If you want to get the inside scoop on Disney, or even other media organizations, you should check out ThatParkPlace.com and subscribe to WDW Pro's YouTube channel. That'd be way easier, more accurate, and, uh, less dumb. Are you saying I won't get accurate information this way? No. No, you can't. <sighs> Who'd have thunk? <sighs>